Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Garrett Phillips? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime and offer my analysis. Garrett Phillips was born on August 13, 1999, he was raised in the town of Potsdam, New York. His mother was named Tandy Cyrus. Garrett's father died when Garrett was two years old. Garrett had a younger brother named Aaron, who had a different father. Tandy worked full-time as a bank manager and part-time at a bar. In October of 2010, she met a man named Oral Hillary in that bar. He went by the name Nick. Nick moved to the United States from Jamaica when he was 16. He served three years in the Army before attending St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York. He was considered an exceptional soccer player and led his team to a national championship. He found work in Florida as a math teacher and eventually moved to Potsdam and became the head soccer coach at Clarkson University. Nick had children from a prior relationship. Tandy and her children moved into a house with Nick and his children, but in September of 2011, they broke up because Tandy's sons did not like Nick. They found him to be too regimented and strict. Tandy and her sons moved into an apartment at 100 Market Street, which is a brick building that contained multiple apartments. Tandy had another love interest at one point, a law enforcement officer named John Jones. John wasn't a fan of Nick. At one point, he confronted him about dating Tandy. Allegedly, Nick told John that he was not dating Tandy when in reality, he was. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On October 24, 2011, at about 5 p.m., a college student named Marissa Vogel and her boyfriend were in an apartment at 100 Market Street. The couple was watching the television show Dexter. The couple heard running next door in the hallway and a loud crash. They heard someone yell the word no or ow, followed by the word help. After this, they heard the sound of someone falling. The sound came from Garrett's apartment, which was apartment number four. Marissa investigated by knocking on Garrett's door, only to hear a click as if the door was locking. This experience would normally be creepy and frightening, but it must have been even more so after just watching an episode of Dexter. Marissa called the police at 5.08 p.m. A patrol officer with the Potsdam Police Department arrived at 5.14 p.m. He listened at the door of apartment number four, but did not hear any noise. He then knocked at the door, at which time he heard sounds consistent with someone walking around. At 5.24 p.m., the officer used his baton to knock on the door again. He once again heard noises. At 5.33 p.m., the landlord arrived and opened the door. The officer and the landlord found Garrett unresponsive on the floor near a wall in his mother's bedroom. They each performed CPR, and Garrett was transported to the hospital. Garrett Phillips was pronounced dead at 7.18 p.m. The cause of death was strangulation and suffocation. Here's what the police found during the course of their investigation. There were no cuts or bruises on Garrett's body, although he had marks on his neck and rug burns on his knees. The blinds on a window of the apartment were bent outward, and the screen had been pushed out as if somebody climbed out of the window. There were fingerprints on the window, but no matches were found. There was a crack on a roof tile of a shed that was below the window, which was not there before the murder. A footprint was located in the mud outside of the window. A very small amount of DNA was recovered from under Garrett's fingernails, but initially it was not matched to anybody. A woman named Shannon Harris and her boyfriend were changing a tire on a truck from about 4.50 p.m. to 5.20 p.m. They were just outside of 100 Market Street and had a view of the window. They told the police that they did not see anybody come out of the window and they did not see anybody at all through the window. The boyfriend later changed his story and said that he saw a figure in the window, but he was not considered to be credible because he deviated from his original statement. Right away, the police suspected that Nick Hillary might be involved. 
A few people had pointed the police in his direction, including Tandy and her former lover, John Jones. As I mentioned, Nick and Tandy had broken up a month earlier, and Nick may have blamed Garrett for that breakup. Surveillance video from a nearby high school captured Garrett Phillips riding a ripstick in front of the school at 4.52 p.m. A ripstick is similar to a skateboard. An SUV that looks similar to one owned by Nick was captured in the high school parking lot. It arrived about six minutes before Garrett was captured on camera. No one exited the SUV. The vehicle was captured leaving the parking lot just seven seconds after Garrett passed the camera. The vehicle turned left out of the parking lot, which was in the same direction that Garrett was riding. After this, cameras captured Garrett making his way toward 100 Market Street, but did not capture the SUV following that same route. Just from the video alone, it was not possible to positively identify the vehicle as belonging to Nick or to prove that Nick was driving that vehicle. Nick was interviewed by the police two days after the murder. During the interview, the police did not do a good job. It's like they really didn't understand how to conduct an interview. Nick really didn't seem to be sure of what to do either. Instead of saying something like, I want a lawyer and I remain silent, he shared information with the police. At certain points, he appeared to be cooperative, but then at other times, he refused to answer basic questions. Eventually, the police obtained a warrant and took pictures of Nick naked. They found that he had an injury to his ankle. After this, Nick was released from custody. Nick claimed that he was unlawfully detained and his reputation was damaged by statements the police made implicating him in the death of Garrett Phillips. He filed a lawsuit against the town, which was ultimately unsuccessful. During a deposition he gave as part of that lawsuit, some of the details he provided were different than what he had told the police. Nick Hillary confirmed that it was his vehicle at the high school parking lot, so he removed any doubt as to that issue. Nick had originally said that he turned right out of the high school parking lot and drove directly to his residence, which was four-tenths of a mile away. This, of course, did not match the surveillance video, which had him turning left in the same direction as Garrett. A new prosecutor named Mary Rain was elected. She made arresting someone for Garrett's murder a central component of her campaign. Nick was indicted for second-degree murder in May of 2014. Here's the theory of the crime from the police and the prosecutors. When Nick was dating Tandy, he had access to a key to the apartment. At some point, he made a copy of that key. Nick was mad at Garrett for causing the relationship between him and Tandy to fail. Nick stalked Garrett on October 24. He followed him for a short distance in his vehicle, but then parked the vehicle and ran to 100 Market Street, arriving there before Garrett. He used his key to enter the apartment and waited for Garrett. After Garrett arrived, Nick strangled him and climbed out of the window to make his escape. Nick was released on bond in July of 2014. The second-degree murder charges were dismissed in October of 2014 due to misconduct on the part of the prosecutor, Mary Rain. Nick was indicted again in January of 2015. In September of 2016, his trial started. Nick selected a bench trial, so the judge was going to render the verdict. There was no jury. On September 28, Nick Hillary was found not guilty. Less than two years later, on June 28, 2018, Mary Rain's license to practice law was suspended for two years based on complaints of misconduct. Some of her violations occurred during the prosecution of Nick Hillary. In July of 2018, a judge dismissed a misdemeanor charge of second-degree criminal contempt against Nick Hillary. This charge had been filed against him for allegedly violating a no-contact order issued for Tandy Cyrus. Nick filed a second lawsuit against Potsdam, New York. This one was also unsuccessful. Now moving to my analysis. Even though Nick was ultimately found not guilty of murder, many people believe that he was responsible. Others say that Nick could not have committed the crime, and he was only targeted by the authorities because he was one of a few black people who lived in Potsdam. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Nick was responsible for the murder, starting with the inculpatory evidence. Nick Hillary lied about why his relationship with Tandy failed. 
he said that the breakup was amicable, but text messages indicate that it was not. Nick was aware that Garrett's attitude toward him was a major contributor to the end of his romantic relationship. Garrett Phillips was a 12-year-old boy. He probably did not have a large number of enemies. Who else had a motive to kill him? Nothing was stolen from the apartment. Whoever was there was probably there specifically to kill Garrett. Nick admitted to being in the high school parking lot when Garrett was there. He also admitted that he did not exit his vehicle. He said that he was there to scout for soccer players, but it was raining, so he decided to leave. Interestingly, Nick parked his vehicle and moved it once to a different parking spot. Neither spot had a view of the soccer field. Nick repeatedly claimed that he went directly home from the parking lot, but this is not true. He made a left turn instead of a right turn. When he made the left turn, he should have seen Garrett, but Nick claimed that he did not see him. As far as Nick's alibi, his daughter said that she arrived home at 4.30 p.m. and that her father was there at that time. She said they ate dinner together. The police found a text message from her to her father sent later asking when they were having dinner. So either that first dinner was really unsatisfying or someone wasn't being honest. Nick sustained an injury to his ankle. It had a cut on it and it was swollen. He said he injured it moving furniture, but he could not provide any details. The information about his ankle was excluded from his trial because he requested a lawyer and the police ignored that request. Nick may have had a copy of the door key and there was no forced entry into Garrett's apartment. Some people believe that Tandy's former lover, John Jones, could have been involved. He may have also had access to a key, but John Jones was captured on video surveillance walking his dog during the time of the murder. There is no way John was responsible. Initially, tests performed on the DNA that was found under Garrett's fingernails were inconclusive, but a later test using different software indicated the probability was high that the DNA belonged to Nick. The test was not considered reliable enough for use in court, but that alone doesn't mean the test results were incorrect. According to Tandy, Nick entered her apartment uninvited not long before the murder. She woke up to find him standing in her bedroom. This is when she demanded her key back. Now moving to the exculpatory evidence. No reliable physical evidence tied Nick Hillary to the crime scene. There was no video of the murder, no witnesses. The fingerprints on the window at Garrett's apartment did not match Nick. The footprint located in the mud outside did not match him either. Nick's assistant soccer coach, Ian Fairley, said that Nick visited his house at 5.21 p.m. on the day of the murder. Nick was not out of breath and was not sweating. Ian's residence was about a block away from Garrett's apartment. John Jones appeared to insert himself into the investigation. For example, he was sitting next to Tandy when she was interviewed by the police on the day after the murder. Perhaps he unduly influenced the police. The investigation by the police was incompetent. Who knows if they overlooked other suspects or missed other evidence. The prosecution withheld potentially exculpatory evidence from the defense during Nick's trial. If they were willing to do this, what else were they willing to do? When considering all the evidence, do I think that Nick Hillary was responsible for the death of Garrett Phillips? I think in reality he probably was, but there is no way he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I think what makes me suspicious of Nick is that he just couldn't seem to tell the truth. Also, the crime was not planned out very well, which points to a killer who is angry. Even though I believe Nick was responsible, if he was not, what could have happened in this case? Well, there are a few alternate theories of the crime, which is one of the reasons I believe Nick is not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Perhaps a burglar somehow gained access to Garrett's apartment without breaking the door. The intruder may have been trying to steal something from the apartment and was surprised when Garrett came home. The intruder murdered Garrett and escaped. It's also possible that Garrett was randomly targeted by an offender. He followed Garrett back to his apartment. When Garrett opened the door, he forced his way in and killed Garrett. Now moving to my final thoughts. In my opinion, there wasn't enough evidence against Nick Hillary for charges to be brought against him. I think he was only prosecuted out of incompetence and frustration. People wanted somebody to be held accountable, and he was the best suspect. Nick Hillary is either extremely lucky or extremely unlucky. 
If he was responsible, he was lucky in that somehow he committed the crime without leaving enough evidence behind to be convicted. If he was not responsible, he was unlucky in the sense that he made a number of suspicious moves that are difficult to explain. He behaved in a way that seemed inconsistent with somebody who was innocent. There is the sense that Nick Hillary was his own worst enemy. He unwisely spoke to the police, believing that maybe he could outsmart them, but as it turns out, they were only marginally more incompetent at running an investigation than Nick was at appearing to be innocent. Those are my thoughts in the case of Garrett Phillips. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.